Good day, this is Prophetess Wendy. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're joining us for the first time, I want to welcome you to my subscribers. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. I can see that the channel is growing just because of you. Hallelujah. If you're watching me for the first time, don't forget to subscribe below just to help this channel to grow. And may the God of heaven continue to bless you wherever you're watching us from. Today we're discussing one of the most important topics, hallelujah, to say that what you are praying for, the very same thing that you're praying for are the very same thing that comes to challenge you. Amen. <laughs> this is a true story. I have seen that when you become serious about something, the very same thing that you are praying for, it will come and challenge you later. Uh, to take you to the Bible, I'll take you to the book of Job. I know when we speak of Job, we're speaking about this trouble. But today, I don't want to focus on the animals whatsoever and everything. I want to focus on the children of Job. The Bible says Job was that man, you know, who will wake up. He was a good father, this man. Hallelujah. Let's thumbs up for Job. When I get to heaven, that's the first man I want to see. He encourages me when I go through challenges and troubles. Anyway, let me come back to the topic. It says that, he was a great father to a point that he would wake up in the morning, go and pray for the children. Amen. The Bible says he would say that maybe one of my children could have seen, you know. He was standing in the gap for his children, saying that maybe one of my children could have seen, you know. He would go there and pray for them. Hallelujah. Ah, where were the neighbors? The neighbors were just enjoying themselves. The Bible is not even talking about the neighbors. The ones that were not being prayed for, they were not challenged. Amen. But this one, because Job was very serious about praying for them, you know. Do you know what the devil did? The devil harassed the children of Job. The devil killed them all at once. There were ten in total. Seven boys and three girls. He killed them all at once. Amen. And this had the wife of Job. You know, this one does not speak much about her prayer life, you know. That's why even when she was challenged, does not respond like the husband the Bible says, she says to Job, Job, you are still faithful as ever, aren't you? Why don't you curse this God and die? Why? Because she was so heartbroken. You know, she asked herself a question. If God was God, how can he do this to us? Amen. But here yeah, Job was saying, I came with nothing. With nothing I shall return. Amen. Job had a revelation. He had a revelation that these children are not mine. They are coming from God. God is the one that has blessed me. Even when he was challenged, he was not confused to accuse the neighbors. You know, some of us, if something like that can happen, you know, I've seen, we once had the funeral at home. You know, when people are coming to comfort us, you know, people started to speak a lot of stories. Maybe somebody from that street could have bewitched this child who has died right here. People are mourning. People are heartbroken. Like this woman, the wife of Job, whom the heart was broken. You know, I remember, this is just a revelation. Let me not say I remember. Well, I remember when I was reading that scripture, the revelation that I got. Even now, as I'm speaking to you, to say that maybe you could have said, woken up ill, and the wife asked me, dear, where are you going? I'm going to pray for the children. Ah, oh, bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. And then all of a sudden, you hear such type of news to say that your children have died all at once. The one that he was praying for, I believe this was the question that came to the mind of the wife to say, the one that I'm praying for. So when I say that, my dear sister, you are going to be challenged. The very same things that you have prayed for are the very same things that are going to come and challenge you. When the enemy comes to attack you, he does not attack things that does not matter to you. He attacks what is important to you. These children were very important to Job. Make no mistake. There, there is a part where Job says, Cast be the day when I was born. Why? Because he was so heartbroken you know sometimes when we lose animal it's fine i have had so many people saying this you know i quote from so many people saying when people have had an accident did they die and they say no but the car is beyond repair repairs and they say bless god we thank god for the life amen i believe that if job could have lost his um animals he could have lost whatsoever he wouldn't be so heartbroken like losing his children you know like this woman who has said cast this god 
cast this God, you know, saying, saying some nasty stuff unto this God, you know. She had nothing good to say to this God because of what God has allowed the devil to do into their lives. But yet the woman had no revelation that the very same God that is doing this is putting us to the test. Amen. When you are praying for a husband, I remember some of us standing testifying <laughs> oh i thank the lord for my husband look at this ring eh, the things that they will do <laughs> you will even be so embarrassed to talk about him in public you will even be so embarrassed and you ask yourself what has got into this man you know when the enemy enters into men you know don't deal with the men the mistake that we tend to make as women when a woman is when a man is misbehaving when i deal with him amen when he comes back late you want to lock the doors amen you want to lock the doors and go back where you come from do you know where he's coming from <laughs> If there was no you, he was not going to come home. He was going to spend the whole night there. So if he thought of you and came home, just open the door for him to come in. Don't deal with him directly. You must deal with the spirit. You remember when Jesus was speaking to Peter to say that, get thee behind me. You can see we're here. I'm dealing with a spirit of lust. I'm dealing with the spirit of adultery that has entered, that has sneaked in into this house. But if you have no revelation, you won't see why. This is not the man that I have married. Amen. The devil has entered the door of this marriage. Amen. I remember this is a true story. There was a woman who was testifying to say that she was praying for her husband, you know, to stop drinking. <laughs> the time when she was not praying for him to stop drinking, it was fine. He was bringing six, you know. Uh, it was fine. He was drinking two bottles. It was fine. But she said, when I embark on a journey of saying that I want to pray for my husband right now, <laughs> you know what has happened? She says, you know what? I took up a seven day fast to go and pray for my husband. You know, when you leave the house, you leave your, your husband with the kids and everything else you take the kids to your sister to say i know my husband cannot take care of the kids i'm just gonna leave him with the house i the seventh day when they were breaking the fast she's expecting a miracle that when she gets home she will find him sitting you know the holy spirit they will have dealt with him on the seventh day when she came home this is a true story there were bottles everywhere gary even had the part <laughs> worse while he was drinking three now now he, he added six you know why because the devil can see that you want to come out and there is a deliverance that is coming so what he does he plays mind games he plays tricks so that you can end up cursing god and when you are cursing god you're no longer standing in the right position for god to act or do anything amen sometimes before god can bring a particular situation in your life he first discuss with the devil oh, go hey the devil says i know how much she loves her husband the second one that i'm going to talk about um it was a woman they used to uh, uh, share her testimony you know that she trusted her husband you know sometimes when god wants to test you he will he will tell the devil ah the devil will say the way she loves her husband ah <laughs> you won't win amen let me harass the husband hey let me tell you what has happened to that woman that woman loved her husband so much and the husband cheated so this woman were testifying they were saying that don't put your trust on your husband but put your trust on God. Amen. When you say that, God, I'm putting my husband before you, you no longer even check his phone because you have dedicated him unto the Lord. You know, so they said that that, that that man, you know, what he did, he cheated. So they asked this woman, you know, to say that we want you to close by prayer. They said she started praying. When she was praying, she started crying bitterly, saying, my husband, my husband. When they say, let's pray for food. She would cry like that, my husband. Why? Because she could not believe what he has done. Amen. Sometimes it's not him. He's influenced by the devil. Sometimes God will put you to the test. He does not say how he's going to put you to the test. It doesn't mean when you are praying for something, you're not going to be challenged. You might have been like Hannah praying for your children to say that I'm going to pray for my children. You know, I'm going to put them before the Lord. It doesn't mean the very same children that they have prayed for, they're not going to be sick. Don't curse God. Amen. Worship God. Take them to God and say that God, you are the healer. I remember my daughter being very sick. You know, she was so sick, very, very, very sick. 
Then I, I went to the doctor to see this particular doctor and the doctor was also sick, had back pain. Then I asked him, doctor, what's wrong? He said, I'm suffering from back pain. I said, doctor, let me pray for you. Amen. I prayed for that particular doctor, but yet my daughter was, was vomiting like nobody's business and the devil was whispering, you want to pray for the doctor while you have failed, while you have taken your daughter, your daughter to the doctor because you failed as a mother. You did not fail, I'm telling you. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that you did not fail. Amen. The prayer was heard in heaven. Amen. The prayer was registered in heaven. That was just a test. If I could have taken my daughter's sickness, I wouldn't have prayed for that doctor who needed healing more than my daughter. Maybe that is the reason why God used this daughter of mine to bring me to that doctor so that I can pray for him. Amen. But for me, I'm not aware that this sickness, you know, it's pushing me to go to the doctor who's sick that I must lay hands upon. But if I could have taken this thing serious and say, Ish, since my daughter is sick, I cannot pray for anyone. No, no, no. You continue doing what you're supposed to do. So what do I have to say to you? If you find yourself challenged by the very same thing that you have prayed for, do not give up. Amen. Keep on praying in the presence of the Lord. God is the God that answers prayer. And don't be afraid. You no. Know? Once you start praying for someone, or you say, God, I'm praying for financial breakthrough. Hey, you'll be broke that month. It will be worse trying to discourage you not to pray. Pray harder. Amen. If you were praying five minutes, make it ten minutes. Be serious in your prayer. I'm telling you, heaven is going to come and deliver you. I've seen it with Job, the one that I've given an example. The Bible says, because he never cares God. He says, that I know that my Redeemer liveth. He had the revelation that God, once God does something like this, he's definitely going to promote me one way or the other. I might not know, know I might not know how he's going to deliver me from this. It was not clear to Job, since you have taken my 10 children, how are you going to bring them back? But the Bible says God gave him 10 children. They were the most beautiful girls in the planet. There was no beautiful children like Job's children. He had seven sons again and three daughters. They were very beautiful. The Bible, in the whole of the Bible, they are considered to be the most beautiful children in the planet. So what do I have to say? God is going to bless you. Amen. God is going to remember you. Even if, you know, you know, sometimes when you are praying more, is the more things start to escalate, to escalate to another level of confusion. Once you see such type of confusion, you know that I am close to my breakthrough. The Lord is about to perform a miracle. The way that there is a problem, now it means it must be solved. If there is a problem, it's an indication that something is going to be solved. If there's a problem in your car, it needs to be fixed. God is going to fix it. When you come with that problem unto the Lord to say that, God, this is what is happening. Amen. I have seen somebody saying, have you noticed that the kids that does not have medical aid, they don't get sick. Have you noticed that the rich people, when they speak of their sickness, it goes with their money in their pocket. They say, Jah, they'll tell you millions. And you think, the one that does, does not have money, God is taking good care of them. The ones that does not have medical aid, they don't cough a lot. The one that does not wear, have a jersey like your children, who have got 20 jerseys, they don't get sick of coughing. Yours, you've got a heater. You've got warm jackets. You know, you've bought everything for the season. But still, they still get sick. Why? Because you will be tested. And when God tests you, God does not tempt. Remember this in the book of James. It says God does not tempt anyone. But he will put you to the test. And when you pass such, a, such type of test, you know, when you endure in such type of trials, the Lord is going to promote you. It says even gold, it needs to be refined. It needs to be put under fire. Even yourself, you'll be put under fire. But the Bible says, when you walk through fire, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to be there with you. Amen. He's the God that will never leave you. Even in that situation, he's watching. Amen. Sometimes just laugh at the devil when he's doing these crazy things. Amen. Just laugh. When you're busy praying for your boss, that day the, the boss will just slam the door on, on your face. Amen. Sorry about that. He just slammed the door on your face. Or telling you such things about you know i remember this other day my boss asking me about the report and i'm thinking hey where am i going to find that report from years ago you know i don't even know where the papers are you know you could see where hey, 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 it's a battle here <laughs> but you know what god is with us he's faithful why because the moment you start praying for people the moment they start uh, uh, moving away from you 
the moment they start doing nasty things, don't be afraid. The Lord is with you and God is going to reward you. God is going to answer you. He has seen your tears. He has heard your prayer. He says, call unto me and I will answer you. God does not lie. He is definitely going to answer you. Do not walk by sight. No things that makes us to be afraid is what we see. When you see your daughter vomiting after you have laid hands on her, like, hey, is she ever going to be well? You know, is the situation ever going to change? You know, it says when the woman was trying to get help, it grew worse. But at the end, Jesus was able to heal her completely. Even in your situation, Jesus is going to come through for you. Hang in there. Don't give up. Continue praying. Hallelujah. But one thing I wanted you to know, the very same things that we are praying for are the very same things that are challenging us. I don't know what is it that you are praying for. But if you need prayer, please comment down below. I'm definitely going to pray with you. I love you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.